It's Saturday, August 11th, and these are my Burpee Long Keeper tomatoes that I started from seed in mid-June. They're getting pretty tall, and they're going to have to go in bigger containers. Now, um, Burpee Long Keeper tomatoes are different from most tomatoes in the sense that you don't let them ripen on the vine. You actually let, the, uh, you actually let them grow to full size, and then you pick them green, and then you store them in a cool, dry place over the winter and then you bring them out one by one as you need them and set them on the counter to ripen as needed. Uh, another trick that you can do is you can put it in a brown paper bag uh, with an apple because an apple releases something called ethylene gas and that is what tomatoes produce endogenously to ripen themselves. It's the ethylene gas that makes them turn from green to red. So if you put the green tomatoes in a brown paper bag with an apple, it'll help speed up the process. Now if you look, you'll notice that I pulled out most of my dwarf tomatoes and some of my indeterminates because they had pretty bad blight and they just weren't producing anymore. Now I'm going to put these long keeper tomatoes in my 10 gallon felt grow bags that I had some of my dwarves uh, growing in. But because the dwarfs had such bad blight, I need to clean the bag. So what I did was I hosed them off very well. I let them dry and I've actually had them baking in my oven for two hours at 225 degrees to pasteurize them and make sure that I kill any diseases that are lurking in those bags because the last thing you want to do is put these nice new healthy tomatoes in a bag that had sick tomatoes in it and have leftover viruses or funguses or uh, bacteria. If you've watched my videos before, you'll know that I grow my indeterminate tomatoes in 20 gallon grow bags and my semi-determinate dwarf tomatoes and determinate tomatoes in number 7 bags. Now I'm putting these indeterminate long keeper tomatoes in number 7 bags. So that conflicts with my previous information. The reason why I'm doing this is because these are not a main season tomato. I don't expect to get months of production out of them. I expect them to be shorter and I'm going to harvest the tomatoes green. So I don't need that massive amount of root energy for ripening. I'm also going to be moving in six weeks and I want to be able to pick these up and transport them. And I'm not going to be able to do that in a 20 gallon grow bag. I'm going to try them in the smaller number 7 bags and see how they perform. So I've had these bags baking at 225 degrees for about 2 hours and what I did was, so I wouldn't get dirt all over the place, I wrapped them in heavy duty aluminum foil. Uh, it's pretty hot, 225 degrees to be exact, but I'm going to bring these outside and I'm going to let them cool off and then I'm going to repot my tomatoes. Here is everything that we need for the Burpee Long Keeper experiment. Now, this is going on the middle of August, and you'll notice, if you've watched some of my videos before, you see how I, how I like to plant my tomatoes. Some of the stuff here is different. Um, you'll notice, first off, that I have a bag of pre-made garden soil. In my other videos, I like to make my own soil using a, a blend of, of peat, compost, and topsoil in order to save some money because in the beginning of the season everything's really expensive but at the end of the season everything's on sale I got this bag for a dollar fifty at Walmart so this is normally a four or five dollar bag of garden soil now everything's super cheap because a lot of people just don't know that here in the south you have really two tomato seasons uh, the other thing is um, we actually have a reverse disease pressure situation going on here. Normally you have to maintain your plants because diseases ramp up really badly in the middle of the summer when humidity is bad, but actually um, it's going to keep getting cooler and drier. So we actually have less disease pressure as the plants mature. So we want to make sure to maintain them as the season progresses. So you'll notice that I have a lot of my standby uh, fertilizers for planting in the hole. Uh, but I'm really just going to mix this with a bag of garden soil and some compost on top. Nothing really special. Um, and as uh, if, if you don't know, it's been an absolutely horrible summer for the East Coast so far with crazy amounts of rain. Um, July, we had uh, 20, almost 20 inches of rain for the month of July. And we had just two and a half awful weeks where we were just drowning. Now we have... This is the seventh day in a row where there's barely a cloud in the sky. It's just been hot and dry and absolutely beautiful. So it's now um, towards the evening and I'm going to plant 
these long keeper plants. Um, you'll notice I've already pruned them up really well on the bottom. Um, I took all the uh, growth off a couple of days ago so everything would have a chance to heal over. And now I'm going to plant these just like I do most of my plants. So what we have here, uh, these are uh, number seven grow bags, seven gallon grow bags. Uh, in this we put uh, the bag of garden soil. So the first 50% of each bag was that one uh, bag of garden soil which filled them up halfway and then we put um, a bag of black cow composted cow manure on the top and then we just gave it a few turns. Uh, generally we want the top to be compost and the bottom to be the really loamy um, garden soil that has a lot of organic matter in it so the roots will have very little resistance to grow. Now if you've watched my other videos before you know you know how I like to plant uh, tomatoes but if you're new to the channel all we do is we dig a pit in the center of each bag and this would this would if you have a, um, a raised garden bed or a standard garden bed you'd be doing the same thing just dig a pit and in that pit, we're going to put about two tablespoons worth of any kind of organic 555 fertilizer. That's like two small handfuls. And then we're going to put a tablespoon worth of crab and lobster shell meal. This stuff is awesome. It's a consistent form of uh, calcium that feeds all season and uh, it helps prevent blossom end rot and the crab and lobster shell meal actually helps keep nematodes away. So we're going to put about a tablespoon's worth in each hole and then for strong root development we want to bury bone meal also about a tablespoon's worth in each hole. And this doesn't have to be exact. Now, these organic fertilizers are not readily available. You need the natural soil microbiology to break down these, uh, these fertilizers into usable nutrition for your plant. So what we're doing here is we're feeding for a long period of time, slow and low as the plant develops. So we're just going to stir it up a little bit like a pot of soup. Now we're going to plant our tomatoes. Now, if you haven't watched my videos before, it's important to know that the tomato is a very amazing plant because all of these fine hairs have the ability to form into full strength roots. So the deeper you bury your tomato plant, the more extensive the root system will be, the more extensive the root system, the more fruit it can produce and sustain. So, we're going to turn this upside down, gently squeeze the container. You can see the root system here. We're going to bury the stem up to about here. We're really going to bury it deep, because the deeper we go, the more and stronger of a root system we will have. There's one, and the second fluff up the bottom just a little bit to free up the roots to grow. Plant it deep and backfill around it. Now we're going to top dress with a small handful of the 555 pellets. And with your fingertips just loosely work that into the soil. bit of crab and lobster shell meal on top. Just a sprinkle. And then I'm going to water these in. The soil is already pretty damp. and you want to wet the fertilizer to assist in the breakdown process. The fertilizer will not break down if it is dry. So soak these guys down really well. 
Now, I want you all to notice something. Here you will see the remnants of my garden. About 50% of my tomatoes were in terrible shape because of all of the diseases so far this season. It's the middle of August, they've been in the ground since the middle end of March. So they've had a full season and more and they produced a lot of fruit for me, but a lot of them are not doing too well right now. I do not want to put my new tomatoes in contact with the old tomatoes because I don't want the diseases to spread. So I've had tomatoes on this side of my yard and in the center of the yard. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to let my newly planted tomatoes relax in the shade for uh, pro at least 24 hours and then I'm going to move them over to here on this side of my yard because that side of my yard gets full sunlight all day and there hasn't been any dis or there hasn't been any tomatoes planted around here and I want to keep them isolated and quarantined away from the others so they do not get sick. Now, sunshine is the absolute best disinfectant. It's the best antibacterial, antifungal treatment known to man. So I want them to get as much sun as possible because the more radiation that will hit the leaves, the less of a healthy environment it'll be to spread disease. If all goes well, this will be a great way where you can have tomatoes all winter uh, in any climate, no matter where you live, as long as it's suitable for uh, a summer growing season to get tomatoes to begin with. So, they, again, they're to be harvest green, and then you keep them in a cool, dry, shady place, and you just pull them out as needed. So it's a good way that even if you were to live in the, uh, the Pacific Northwest or the Upper Midwest, you can have fresh, homegrown tomatoes uh, all winter. They're supposed to store for a very long time. Here we are on August 25th, and I wanted to give you an update on the Burpee Longkeeper. As you can see, the leaves are nice and green. It's because I've been giving them fish emulsion regularly. But one thing I did want to show you, see all these black spots all over the leaves? These black spots are because I was in a rush one night, and I sprayed these down with my homemade mixture of neem oil, copper, dish soap, and baking soda. But I did it too early while the sun was still out and the sun was so strong that I literally deep fried the leaves. These are burn marks from the neem oil and the other chemicals sitting on the leaves and the sun was just too strong and burned the leaves. So let that be a lesson to you, never spray when the sun is out. Always wait until it's setting or on a very cloudy day where you're confident it's going to be cloudy the whole day. But the plants are just fine, they will recover luckily. We've had a string of nights in the upper 60s, so I do expect these to set some fruit. You can see they have nice flower clusters on both plants, so fruit should be setting soon. As always, I really appreciate you all watching. Please subscribe to the channel for more updates. Thanks everyone.